How's it going everyone? Connor here with the Diamond and we have finally made it. After a 60 game regular season filled with never ending uncertainty and a million ups and downs for Major League Baseball, we have finally made it through and find ourselves squarely in the middle of the postseason. But while I've spent a lot of the last two weeks talking about the playoffs and what's to come, today I actually want to take a bit of a step back and look back at the year that was. Specifically, in this episode of the Baseball Vlog, I want to talk about a lot of the changes that came to baseball in 2020 and have a discussion about whether these rule changes were actually good for the game and whether they should stick around going forward, including the three batter minimum, seven inning double headers, the new extra innings rules, and of course, the new playoff format. We're going to get into all of that and more in today's episode, so be sure to stick around. But before we get into that, be sure to like this video and subscribe down below if you're new. It really helps us grow. Also, if you're in the mood for more baseball content, be sure to check us out on our website, readthediamond.com. We post new articles every Sunday and Wednesday. We post new videos every Monday and Thursday. Links to all of our content are in the description down below, or you can click this link in the upper right hand corner to check out all of our uploads. But for right now, let's get into it. Olsen, and that will do it. Oh, it's Papa. One pitch, game over. History made in Oakland. Runner starts at second and he hits a grand slam walk off. Who needs a bunt? <laughs> Starting off with perhaps the most divisive topic on this list, let's talk about the new extra innings rules. Now, when they were first announced, they were met with nearly universal criticism from baseball fans with the main sentiments being that it doesn't feel like real baseball and that it just seems like one giant gimmick. And frankly, they aren't wrong on that. But while public opinion has shifted a bit since people got to see this rule in action, the emphasis here should be on a bit. Because while I haven't seen a whole lot of people go from hating this rule to loving this rule, I have seen quite a few people go from hating to somewhat tolerating. And to be honest, that's kind of where I stand on this right now. While there is a lot to not like about this rule, namely the gimmicky nature of the whole thing, I do have to admit that it has led to a lot of really exciting baseball in the late innings. And to its credit, it hasn't led to the boring sacrifice bun offs that a lot of people thought it would. However, MLB shot any kind of legitimacy this rule had out the window by not including it in the postseason. I mean, what's the point of implementing it in the regular season if you don't have the confidence to do so in the postseason? You're just going back in your word on this point and it makes people not trust this rule even more. If you don't have the confidence to do it in the postseason, you shouldn't be doing it in the regular season. And personally, I don't think this rule should be coming back in 2021. Bauer to the plate. Curveball pounded into the ground right side. Scooped up, flipped to first, and that's it. A complete game shutout for Trevor Bauer, giving the Reds back-to-back -back wins for the first time. In Next, let's talk about the seven-inning doubleheader. Now, there really isn't a whole lot to be said on this subject, to be honest mainly because this rule change more than the others was a product of the year that it was created. After all, going into the 2020 season, MLB and the MLBPA knew that there was going to be more doubleheaders this year than there would be in any other regular season. Knowing this, they need to find a way to get all of those games in while not completely destroying the bodies of the players. And this was probably the best way they could have done it. So yeah, I believe that this was an absolutely great move for the 2020 season, and it was largely the reason why we even got 60 games in in the first place. However, I don't think that it should be expanded into a regular season, where there's going to be almost no double headers being played, and there's the possibility of the record books being even more confused. Let's just go back to playing 9, and let's play 2. Cespedes 0 for 2 in his return. And he drives one deep left field, headed back toward the wall. That ball is out of here! Yoannis Cespedes, more than two years on the 
the sidelines. He's back with a home run. And the Mets lead it 1-0 in the seventh. Next, let's talk about another controversial favorite, that being the Universal DH. Now, as much as people like Crash Davis want to ban it by constitutional amendment, there's no denying that the DH is here to stay, and it has been for quite a while now. Frankly, the only strange thing about this situation is that it hasn't been brought to the NL any sooner than 2020. And while a traditional part of the game is being lost, and that does hurt the traditionalists in me a bit, there's almost no denying that the game is going to be better off not having to watch pitchers hit four or five times a game. I mean, it's already hard enough today for offenses to get a ball in play, but to also have to deal with a pitcher who can't hit and try to work around that spot in the lineup, it just doesn't make any sense in the modern game. This move is almost certainly going to be codified in the next round of labor negotiations, and frankly, I'm all for it. It's time to embrace the future. Did he go? You bet he did. Gratterall comes back to get Tucker, one gone in the fifth. After that, they really couldn't with his desires not to be here. And How about that slider when you compare it with a 100 mile, mile per hour fastball world? A big bouncer that Hernandez fields and guns to first to get him at a one two three fifth for Buffalo as they call him five two Dodgers after five. Switching gears a little bit now and talking about something a little more popular. Let's talk about the three batter minimum. Now of all the moves MLB has made in recent years to try and shorten game times a little bit. This one has probably been the most effective one they've put out so far. After all, nothing seems to drag a game down more than having to wait 10 minutes every single inning as managers continue to cycle through their bullpen and change pitchers multiple times per inning. And of course, this problem has only gotten worse in recent years because as the matchups become more and more important, so too does the manager's ability to change pitchers on a dime. So it was a good move by MLB to focus specifically on this issue and use this rule change accordingly. And it works not only because it keeps the game going, but because it also adds another dimension, another layer of strategy to the game, something that I'm a huge fan of. Now when you go to the bullpen, you aren't just thinking one batter ahead, you're thinking three batters ahead, because now you're committed for at least the next three hitters or the end of the inning. This is something that really sets apart the good managers from the bad ones, and that's something I really like to see when I'm watching the game, is that strategic element and how managers overcome those little restrictions along the way. Overall, I think this is a really good rule, it has a really good chance of sticking around going forward, and personally, I think it should. Yeah, the bottom feeders trying to advance, two and two, Kinsler deals. Swing and a miss, got him, and it's over. And the Marlins are headed to the division series as they beat the Cubs 2-0 the final here, and they advance to the DS. And finally, let's talk about the new playoff format. Now, if you've been watching this channel for the last couple of weeks, you already know exactly how I feel about this subject. But if you haven't seen my video on the new playoff format yet, you can click this link in the upper right hand corner to check that out after this video. But for right now, here's the main rundown. I am not a fan of this playoff format, for many reasons. But the main reason is that it promotes mediocrity, and it does so in two main ways. First, it allows way too many teams into the playoffs. Let's be real here. There is no reason why the Milwaukee Brewers should have been a playoff team this year. This was a team that not only didn't have a winning record, but also didn't have a winning record at any point in the 2020 season. But yet when all was said and done, they were one of over half the teams in MLB that got a playoff berth. If the main goal is to create a playoff system that incentivizes teams to be their best and bring out the best in Major League Baseball, Allowing teams like the Brewers in just is not the way to do that. And that brings us to the other way in which it promotes mediocrity, in that it does not incentivize teams to actually be their best, 
or even incentivize teams to be good. It used to be that there was an incentive to win your division and get a higher seed. But in this system, there isn't any of that. Not only do they allow the top two teams in each division, plus the wild card, but if you do manage to become a top seed in either league, you still have to go through the crapshoot three game wild card series. There's no real incentive to win your division or even be a good team because you could just get ousted by a team like the Brewers and get humiliated in front of everybody and ruin the legitimacy of your playoff format before it even really gets started. Now, thankfully, this hasn't happened in this postseason, but if we keep this system going forward, I feel like we are going to see it at some point, and it's going to raise some serious questions for not only the fans and MLB itself, but especially the owners. If I'm a cheapskate owner, and I see this playoff system, I have no real incentive to spend money to make my team great when I can just keep it good or even okay and collect the playoff revenue every single year as a 6, 7, or 8 seed. This is not how we create the best baseball for the playoffs. This is not how we make the game better. This is how we drag it back. This is a terrible playoff system for many, many reasons, but the mediocrity aspect of it is the most insidious, and it's the biggest reason why we need to get rid of it in 2021 and beyond. But with all that being said, I pass things off to you now. What rule changes did you enjoy from the 2020 season? And if you had the opportunity, what rule changes would you put into place? Let me know in the comment section down below. A new episode of MLB Around the Horn is coming on Monday, but until then, I hope you have a great weekend out there. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching this episode of the Baseball Vlog. If you liked what you saw, be sure to like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Also, if you're in the mood for more baseball content, check us out on our website, readthediamond.com, or you can click the links on the left side of your screen to check out our latest uploads.